Today on the newscast, Christians are under siege in one of the world's most bitter conflicts. We get the inside story of the territorial dispute that's left one of the world's oldest Christian communities in the crosshairs. That's next. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. It's considered by many to be the world's oldest Christian nation with its embrace of the faith dating back over 1,700 years. It also suffered a horrific genocide in the 20th century at the hands of Ottoman Turks. Armenia is a small nation with a very consequential history. Today, it's locked in a bitter territorial dispute with its Muslim neighbor, Azerbaijan, over an area known as Nagorno-Karabakh. Now, the two nations even went to war over the region in 2020, and now more than 120,000 Christian Armenians there are currently suffering under an ongoing blockade. Robert Nicholson is the executive director of the Philos Project, and he joined me with an eyewitness account of what's happening on the ground and why Christians everywhere should be concerned. He'll join us in a minute. Now, I know there are many other important topics to dig into here. Armenia's relations with Russia and Iran and Israel's growing relationship with Azerbaijan, which remember, borders Iran to the north and could be very helpful to Israel in confronting the Iranian regime's nuclear program. I'm going to unpack all of that on a future newscast, but for today, I want to focus on the beleaguered Christian community in Nagorno-Karabakh and what can be done to help them. Folks, this is the kind of story you're really not hearing about anywhere else so be sure to subscribe to the Watchman News channel right here on YouTube and click the notification bell so you get alerts every time a new video is posted. Here's my interview with Robert Nicholson of the Philos Project. Armenia is, interestingly, kind of a, a Christian Israel. I, I think of it that way. It's, a, it's an ancient nation preserving uh, an ancient uh, tradition an ancient language in its ancestral homeland, surrounded by people who don't want them there, and uh, also a nation that has a memory of a very recent uh, genocide that happened in, in the Armenians' case just about 100 years ago. That's right. And uh, the situation for these 2.9 million people, these Armenian Christians living in this small land, is extremely difficult. They're squeezed on every side. Turkey on one side, Azerbaijan on the other, Iran in the south, Georgia, and then Russia to the north. Itty bitty country in a very tough neighborhood. Yeah, and by the way, when we talk about Turkey, the perpetrators of that Armenian genocide, of course, and you mentioned Armenia and Israel, people should know that in the old city of Jerusalem, there is actually an Armenian quarter. But on to the current troubles in Armenia, Robert, the main reason you were there, Azerbaijan, one of those neighbors of Armenia to the east, there have been wars between Armenia and Azerbaijan, and it seems that the tension between the two sides is all mainly revolving around one region. Tell us about it. Yes, that region is called Nagorno-Karabakh. It is a region that is inside Azerbaijan. That is certainly what the Azerbaijanis would say but a region that has historically been Armenian and been Christian going all the way back as far as anyone can remember. Unfortunately, both of these areas were swallowed by the Soviet Union. And Joseph Stalin, to keep all of his enemies off balance, drew the lines in such a way to place this Armenian region in the Azerbaijan Soviet Socialist Republic. And after the Soviet Union fell, the dispute about who has the right to that land has become very bloody. There was a war back in the 1990s, shortly after the fall of the USSR, and more recently, in 2020, a more devastating war for the Armenians launched by Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan says, this land is ours. Armenians say, all you have to do is dig in the soil and you'll see that this land is Armenian. In 2020, Azerbaijan uh, swallowed a lot of the land making that region even smaller and just this past december instituted a blockade on the region that has kept the 120,000 armenian christians inside completely cut off from the outside world how alarming was the situation that you saw and heard about firsthand on the ground there it's extremely alarming 
right? This is already a very small country. I'm talking now about Armenia proper. When you look at this other region right next door, this region of Nagorno-Karabakh, the situation is absolutely dire. We could not get in. We requested to get in, but the Russian forces that manage that, that border did not allow us in. Um, what we did find out is that there are about 500 tons of humanitarian supplies that are unable to reach the people inside. Their natural gas has been cut off since March. Uh, other resources like electricity is spotty at best. Families are separated. Surgeries have been canceled. And there is no way for these people inside this region to get the help that they need. We uh, also were pretty shocked to see that Azerbaijan is not only beleaguering the Armenians in this little region, but is actually on a pretty regular basis attacking Armenia proper. Every day we were on the ground, there were violations by Azerbaijani soldiers of the territorial integrity of Armenia, and even uh, an attack in the place where we were the day after, right? Which made the situation very real. We were driving on a bus and the bus driver told us he was gonna shut off the lights inside the bus because of Azerbaijani snipers on the ridge line. In that moment, you're thinking, wow, this, is, this situation is real. So we've got 120,000 followers of Jesus essentially trapped in Nagorno-Karabakh, surrounded by Azerbaijani forces, beleaguered, uh, and we've got just in general, Christians in Armenia certainly feeling the heat, to say the least. What's the end game here? What's Azerbaijan's ultimate goal? And Robert, more broadly, why should Christians here in America, uh, why should they care about what's happening in Armenia right now? Azerbaijan and Turkey see themselves as, as brothers, right? They're sort of two states, one people. And they say that pretty frequently. The dream of these two peoples, both of whom are, are Turkic peoples, Turkic nations, is to create a pan-Turkic confederacy that stretches from Turkey all the way into Central Asia. There also is, importantly, an Islamic dimension to that pan-Turkic union. The only thing that's getting in the way of that grand dream is this tiny Christian nation of Armenia. And these two countries, Turkey and Azerbaijan, are doing everything in their power to squeeze those Christians, to force them out, to cleanse the, the land in such a way that they can, uh, you know, bring it into their, into their domain. Yeah. Uh, happily, there is a peace process underway, uh, led by the United States. This is something that the United States should be commended for in which the United States is trying to mediate between these two parties, between Azerbaijan and Armenia. Unfortunately, in my opinion, not enough has been done, not enough pressure has been put on the Azerbaijani side. Um, but theoretically, the U.S. can play a huge role. Don't forget, both Azerbaijan and Turkey are our allies, right? These are our friends, ostensibly. Yeah. And it wouldn't take much if a decision was made in the White House to pick up the phone and to get uh, Azerbaijan, to get Turkey to back off. Yeah. Now, you ask this question, why should Christians care? There are a number of reasons Christians should care, starting with the Christian reason, right? These are our brothers and sisters in Christ. These are people who have survived against all odds for so long in this, in this part of the world. And I can't imagine that any Christian in the U.S. would want the disappearance of this Christian nation to happen on, on our watch, right? The other reason has to do with uh, I would say American interests, right? This is a free country. This is a democratic country, one of the only democracies in this part of the world. They are uh, wanting to get out of the, the Russian orbit to become closer to the West and are waiting for us to extend a hand and to draw them in. I think a pro-Western Armenia in the Caucasus, in this very important geostrategic part of the world, would be a huge win, not only for America and the West, but for, for democracy overall. Last question, speaking of this being such an important geostrategic region, of course, Israel uh, sits in uh, another US ally, of course, in the middle of the region. At the Philos Project, you have a focus. It's such a unique organization, Robert, in that your focus is yes, on the Jewish people and the people of Israel, but you also focus on the Arab communities in Israel, other minority communities in the Holy Land as well. Talk more about the centrality of your work in Israel and also 
what you're doing in bringing college students and young people over to Israel through passages. The stated mission of the Philos Project is to promote positive Christian engagement in the Near East. And I always say that positive engagement starts with positive engagement with Israel, right? Israel is the connection between me and this part of the world. It's the reason why I believe what I believe and am who I am. And so we have to start there. And we do a lot of work to uh, talk about Israel, to educate people about Israel, to promote the integration of Israel within this wider region. And as you say, a big part of what we do is to bring people over there. I call it incarnational advocacy, right? This is what Christians do. We do things in the flesh. Faith without works is dead. And Passages, this, this organization you mentioned, we founded six or seven years ago to, to bring Christian college students on transformative nine-day trips to the Holy Land to strengthen their faith and also to help them understand what is going on in this essential part of the world. Thank God we brought 10,000 students plus in that short amount of time. COVID set us back, but thank God we're back on track. And I'll tell you what, Eric, there are so many stories that I could tell you, uh, cards that I get in the mail from these students, people who I've never met, who say, thank you so much for starting this organization because fill in the blank. I didn't understand the reality of my faith. I had no idea what it was to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. I never understood this country, this miraculous country of Israel and what it's contributing to the world today in the 21st century. I'm telling you so many uh, testimonials from these students. And my hope is that this engagement, this encounter between Christians in the West and Israel is not just beneficial for Israel, but is in fact the seed of the revival, the spiritual revival that we need here in the United States, right? Yes, what better do. way to revive faith in the 21st century than to reconnect with the place where that faith was born? Thanks again to Robert Nicholson of the Philos Project for those great insights. Folks, be sure to keep the Christians of Nagorno-Karabakh in your prayers. And be sure to join us right here tomorrow on the channel for a Watchman Newscast live stream between 4 and 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Join us live and bring your questions for our Q&A session. We've got a lot to unpack. Until then, thanks for joining us today. God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you never miss an upload. And tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. And don't forget to share your thoughts, insights, and comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.